football factory in New York City. To all my fans in uh, Brazil. Brazil, and particularly my fans at Atletico Mineiro Football Club. There we go, there we go. Jack, Jack the, the World Cup right now, we are midway into this first round. Yes. It seems to be all open right now. So many surprises. Probably one of the best World Cups for a long, long time. True? I believe if this World Cup continues the way it's going, it will be the greatest World Cup of all time. I believe that it's been, the goals have flowed. The only game really that was poor was Iran-Nigeria. Right. We had Brazil-Mexico played to a nil-nil draw in one of the best nil-nil draws in history, mainly thanks to the good goalkeeping of the, of the Mexican goalkeeper. Some of the results, I think the most surprising result early on was the 5-1 victory over Net that Netherlands had over Spain. Yes. Obviously Spain were knocked out yesterday. And England just finished playing um, and it was not a good result for the English. It was an upset and I, in my opinion England played a better game but finally they were not able to win. Jack? Well, I would agree England certainly played well but the problem is that they don't have the killer touch and this has been a problem with England for many, many years. In fact, you could probably say that since the days of Gary Lineker, that prolific goal scorer who uh, basically saved England back in 86 during the group stage when the World Cup was in Mexico, they haven't had that killer goal scorer. And today again, Wayne Rooney had a couple of chances. Yes, he got his goal. But I mean, Suarez, what was he? Two chances, two goals? And that's the difference at this level. When Suarez hit that ball, it was like a cannonball. He hit it, and that, that's a player that's coming off an injury. Yeah, that, that makes you think they want it. Oh, they absolutely. really want it. Absolutely. They yes. want to have that. I goal. think the English players, for want of a better word, a lot of them are spoiled. They're spoiled with the riches of the Premier League. They're spoiled with the hundred and fifty thousand pounds a week. Uh, yes, Lewis Suarez is on a massive wage, but he knows that back in Uruguay, every single person is depending on him. Right. I just feel that. You know, the English players, uh, it's such a difference when I was growing up watching the English team play. Such a difference these days. And I, I, I think England have got to find aggression in their play. Because it's a, no, it's a huge letdown for all the people back in England watching. Absolutely. Last World Cup, England did not do that good. This World Cup, they did not do that good. Right, right. Hopefully, they will do better on the next one. Right. Now, earlier today, right. we had Colombia and yes. Ivory Coast. Right, right. A great game as right, well. Right, right, and right. Colombia was not so well on the first half. Right. Ivory Coast came with a lot of chances to right. score, right. Right. but they couldn't finish as well. And yes. yeah, they don't have a kilo. They don't have a yeah. striker that, yeah. that makes a difference. Yeah. Right. I, right. I, I feel today that Ivory Coast, um, Didier Zakora had a very strong game for them, but in the end, I think he will did. He tired a little bit. Obviously, if Didier Drogba was a few years younger and he could play the full 90 minutes, it would be, be, be a huge difference. Yes, but he's, he's only a 30-minute player now. Yes, Ivory Coast have the, have the star of last season's Premier League, Yaya Toure, who plays for Manchester City, was undoubtedly the best midfielder. One of the best in Europe last season, definitely the best player all round in the Premier League. But I think today Ivory Coast didn't expect Colombia to play as quickly as they did. In fact, in the second half I would agree, particularly not the first half, second half, they moved the ball very well. Even to a point I thought it was similar to the way Chile moved the ball yesterday against Spain. And in the end, I felt key players for Ivory Coast wilted a little bit. I thought Colombia looked uh, bitter today. Yes. I was surprised. They definitely finished stronger. The last time we saw Colombia making a mark on a World Cup was like 16 years ago. Yes, when yes. Valde Hamel was still yes, playing. Yeah, that's right. what, was the what was the yeah. difference today, Mario? Oh, that's the thing. They haven't been doing a good World Cup tournament for so many times, so long. And they have good players, have good players and young players that they know that the whole entire country is counting on them. It's counting on them. So they have expectations. Yeah, they have very aggressive coaching. The coach, I mean, I'm very impressed with the way he's, you know, he's he's very insistent on pushing forward. You know, the midfield five will turn into a midfield three and they'll get guys on the wings and go up and constantly they were stretching Ivory Coast because the midfielders were pushing up and playing almost as old-fashioned wingers. It makes a big difference. A big difference. And, and, and on my opinion, another thing, Ivory Coast depends so much on Yaya Torre. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. That's one man. Yeah, one man, yes. One man to carry the whole yeah. team. Yes, yes. Colombia, they play, they play as a group. Yeah. As a group. Yeah, as a group. Yeah. And that makes a whole lot different. Now we know. Well, we'll do it right today, but there we go. Uh, two great games today, another game coming up. That's uh, in New York, the Football Factory, 
Mr. Jackson. No, everything is football. We'll be back.